Hello everyone, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Global Space Program 1.12. During a recent video, The Way of the Flyback Booster, I introduced the Flyback Boosters. I've attached to the Super Heavy, and now I have attached wings as well as the Mark III cargo ramp and a cargo bay in order to try to turn it into a full-fledged shuttle. So just a reminder, each of the little boosters has nine Raptor engines and the core now only has 13 instead of its regular complement. And we are now trying to bring back the core. The flyback boosters seem to work just fine as we've tested in the previous video. And well, here they go. Uh, this decoupling is tricky though now with the wing of the, fly, of the core here. And here we are trying to get it with an 80 ton payload to orbit and that turns out not to be possible. I didn't expect it to be possible anyway. I was aiming for 70 tons, but I decided to try 80 tons first just in case, and we don't have enough delta V to make orbit, but just barely. We're about two, 300 short, but we would need some to deorbit as well. So I revert and reduce the payload to 70 tons, which is my goal here, and try it again. But of course, the trick is going to be re-entry. I don't expect to be using this model as it is with the Mark III cargo ram and Pekka's super heavy right there. Uh, I'll be making a custom model that will be a stretched version of Pekka's starship and that will have the heat towels at the bottom and look more proper and of course have its cargo bay a little bit more sensible. And also the mass will probably be different as we see one of the little flyback boosters crashing into it. The wings certainly make it a little bit more difficult and we'll have to fix that, but I decided to bring this as close to orbit as we can. It's a little bit tight and it doesn't actually make orbit here. Very, very close indeed, uh, but the periapsis is negative, but I decided to try re-entry like this. So we're going to release the 70 ton payload and Super Heavy right now doesn't have thrusters that can push it back away from the payload. So we just have to sort of time warp it out and let it clip through the cargo bay during time warp. And yeah, the new model will have to have better RCS. And we probably will remove the strakes, the tines, whatever you call them, on the Super Heavy so they don't get in the way of the flyback boosters. And all that business, the back end will look a little bit different. So here's re-entry. And... What I discovered was that our wing isn't placed quite right. We can see that we're using some pitch down here and that's not good. And we've got some overheating. We're using a lot of RCS propellant. Uh, that's basically the leftovers, the residuals from the main tank. And we also have a tank up front and that's what's overheating. It's actually a procedural tank that's acting as the header tank. And unfortunately, I didn't enable crossfeed, so even though I have methane and oxygen left for the RCS, it wasn't feeding into the RCS ports, and that led us to flip. But even as it was, we would probably have run out of the methane and oxygen and wouldn't have been able to hold ourselves proper. So we have to shift the wing around a little bit. So after I realize that, I do enable crossfeed, and it's sort of gets back into a decent position, which is nice. It's nice that I was able to, but again, it's guzzling too much of the propellant, so we're not going to be able to keep this up. And it's still overheating as well, especially that procedural tank. Now, of course, that will be solved once there's a custom model, so I wasn't too worried about that. But yeah, a little bit of a shift of the wing. Also with the new model, the center of mass might be a little bit different. I think the center of mass on the super heavy body is fairly low and so the wings will have to be placed differently once there is a different model. All right, so we're trying it again, this time with somewhat fixed flyback booster separatrons, and also the wing position a little bit different, hopefully leading to less RCS consumption. Now, just to make clear, I'm not saying SpaceX should do this. This is just an interesting challenge for myself. Uh, it is not, it, it, it could be useful, it's uh, not a bad, bad idea, but this is just a matter of, well, I mean, I'm not going to duplicate what they're already going to do. I might as well do something a little bit more interesting, and this is a little bit more interesting, basically. So, up we go. And here we are for flyback booster separation. Ideally, they'd stay point of prograde, if that's important. They're sort of flipping around there. That's not ideal, so... 
tweaking of the Cyprotrons will be necessary probably for their safety, for their safe retrieval. Here again it's very close and we certainly get higher up than last time, but it's still not exactly a nice little orbit. So still some work to do there. And uh, we release the payload. Out it goes. Somehow after releasing the payload we ended up a little bit higher, and even higher than that after I used some RCS. The RCS is pretty strong on Super Heavy right now. I actually tone it down to 25% for the re-entry so that it doesn't guzzle so much. So initially we were re-entering in the dark because now we're higher up on the apoapsis, so we made it further around the world, but our periapsis is so high that we ended up going right back to the daylight side. So this was a very, very long re-entry. I did this during a live stream and this was painful for my poor audience. Uh, this took a long time and we ended up back over the west coast of Mexico and passing right by Florida again. So we've gone once around. Um, not exactly the ideal situation though, but certainly mild as far as the peak heating is concerned. Not the cumulative heating, if that's a thing here right now. And the procedural tank that's in between the super heavy body and the Mark III parts is still the most troublesome part as far as the heating is concerned. Again, not a problem once we replace this with a custom model, but for now it is a problem. And I was trying to use the pitch to go up a little bit to cool it off. And so we are ascending right now in order to reduce the heating. And that works for a time. But once again, we are short on methane and oxygen and it is using some pitch. It's using less than it did before, but the wing probably should be a little bit further back than where it is right now. The canard is also overheating and that's more concerning because I'm not planning to replace those. I'm going to continue using the procedural wing parts uh, for the proper aerodynamic effects. And well, well, there goes the tank anyway, but oh, and the canards are actually attached to the super heavy, not the Mark III parts, so that's why they're still floating with the body here. But yes, we certainly need to make sure that the canards don't overheat. That would be bad. Anyway, so that was my first attempt to turn the super heavy into a shuttle, and I'll leave it there for now and do some more work. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.